morning, everybody. I was like, I feel like I've run a marathon this morning. I can't believe the time already. It doesn't matter how early you get up. It just seems like you're so, so busy. Anyway, today I promised you that I would do some of this decorative painting. So this is just a board that I did a couple of days ago, just checking the consistency of the paint and I'm just making sure I can remember what I was doing. But what I want to do first of all is talk to you about what's important about this particular step-by-step. -step. Now, I was taught by a lovely lady many years ago, a lady called Donna Dewberry, and she created a technique that she described and called One Stroke. And One Stroke is based on lots of different decorative painting um, brush strokes. And I guess it, the, it's a bit like learning an alphabet. And then with Donna's technique, you then learn how to join up the letters. So we go from having a few brush strokes to actually building it into individual flowers. And what I wanted to do in this session is give you an overview of it. And then what I'm going to do is in the next couple of weeks, we'll lay out a proper schedule so that each week I teach you a, a specific stroke and a different design and we'll work through it. So it's probably going to take us about, I'm going to think probably about eight weeks to go through all the different elements. But the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we've ordered and Create and Craft have got in stock the right colours for you. So because that's really important. And when you choose colour, it actually influences the look and feel of the design. But the most important thing is the quality of the paint that you work with. Now, I'm going to work with a Cadence Hybrids. And one of the reasons, and I learned with plaid paints, Vocar paints, but one of the reasons that I got excited about being able to teach this was when I, when I tried this paint, the amount of pigment that's in it meant that I could blend the colours beautifully. It's almost like a seamless rainbow and it's about that quality. It makes such a difference. So you need really high quality pigment paint. So we're talking artist quality. And the fact that this goes on any surface means that when I come to do the show on TV, which is in a few weeks time, I'm going to be able to paint on plant pots. So I'm actually going to paint on plant pots for the garden. And that for me is having one product that I can paint on fabric, I can paint on plant pots, I can paint on my cards, means that I've got the best of both worlds and it all comes out of this, these one pots. So I'm only buying one brand, one kind, and then I can just build on my colours. I'm going to also work with the Screen Sensation brushes. Now, again, these are great because we need a flat brush. And because we've got a nice long flat brush here, and I can splay the bristles and I can get a nice big stroke out of that, it holds plenty of the actual paint. So, I'm going to get cracking. I'm going to show you how to load your brush, first of all. So, the first thing, I'm working on just some black cardstock. So I've chosen this because it really makes the colours pop and it'll make it easy for you to see it at home. And I'm actually going to use this as my colour palette as well because I want you to see how it works. So I'm just going to put out a blob that will balance out to about the size of a 2p piece. And then I'm going to do the same. So that colour is called, uh, I think that's the their, their regular white. And this one is called Ruby, I believe. Let me just double check that, I'm sure it is. So I'm just gonna put some of that, and I, you can see how rich and glossy these colors are. And that's really important. For today, I'm not gonna use any mediums, but when we actually start doing classes, I'm going to actually teach you to use the mediums as well. But today it's just about getting everybody excited and hoping then that you're gonna join me on the journey of doing classes. So you take a flat brush and I'm holding it quite low down the actual brush itself. It's got a wooden handle, a metal ferrule, and then flat bristles. Now, the way that these are made, the brushes are actually clamped into the metal, into the round metal. Sorry, the bristles are clamped in there. They're also slightly feathered on the edge. So if I put this down onto 
the cardstock and I splay the bristles, you can see how they go floppy on the edges. That's brilliant because that means that I've got a really, I can get a really sort of, when I lift it off, I can flick it and get a really fine edge. And it does also mean then that it's gonna hold plenty of paint because I've got all of this for the paint to be loaded into. So to load our paint, we pick up a little bit of white and we put it onto one corner. Now it's important it's on the corner on the front and the back of the brush, so it's on both sides. I then put the second colour on the front and the back. And I'm just going to apologise now for the noise at the moment. So, um, first of all, there's a delivery driver whistling. And he's actually quite tuneful, but he's not whistling in time with the drill. And there's a guy here, and we're doing all the stuff we're supposed to do for social distancing. But we've got a, a guy in here, and he's putting in... Um, towel things so we just put our hands under and the towel comes out and then sanitizers that you just you'd have to press but then you put your hand under and the sanitizer comes out so we're getting ready for this new world that we're all going to be living in so here we go so i've put the color on both sides and now i'm just going to stroke the brush backwards and forwards and push that color up into the bristles and this was a dry brush, so I want to make sure that I've got plenty of colour in there. And this is important too. We need to go back onto exactly the point that I was working. Because if I don't, I'm going to mix my colour and I want the colours to rainbow. I want them to blend so that we can still see very clearly the white and the ruby. And then I'm going to pull that back. Now, if I'm doing a good job, the chisel edge of the brush, so where these little bristles come together, will be nice and sharp. Once that starts to open up, I need to be reloading my brush. It's a sign that the paint's pushed into the bristles and it's not where we need it on the outside to be able to create the stroke that we're doing. So back into the paint, picking up a little bit more. Once that feels nice and creamy where you're working, then you know that you're ready to start work and it feels creamy. So in my head, and I'm gonna work this way up so that you can see. In my head, and I'm holding my brush a little bit higher up now, I'm creating a little V. And there's a little pivot point there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my brush on that V and I'm gonna press the bristles down and I'm splaying them out and then I'm going to wiggle them and create that pretty stroke. And I can feel that most of the paint's been taken off there, so I'm gonna pick up some more, and I'm gonna come back in here. And I'm gonna wiggle again, and I'm going to create that little stroke. And I've got a little stray hair that you can see there has been making naughty little pieces outside but I'm not going to worry about that for the time being. I'm going to do the same here so I'm just blending my colour now because my brush is nicely loaded and I'm just going to come back in here. Oh sorry I'm looking round I'm just looking at the delivery man making sure he's okay and again just blending that colour coming round and now I'm going to turn the brush over and I'm going to use the paint that's on the other side and I've created my first little layer of petals and then I'm really looking forward to working with you and doing these lessons because I'm a little bit rusty it's not something you ever forget but it's a bit like riding a bike and getting ready for the Olympics you do a bit of training and you get better at it so this is that's going to be the fun so I'm now in my head I've got two little parallel lines and I'm just going to go up and over as if I'm drawing on top of a bridge and then up and under as if I'm creating the letter U and then I'm now going to stand on the top of my bristles and I'm just going to flick it round as if it's a little curve. Let's go around there and let's fill in the gap because we've got a little gap here where there's nothing and I'm just going to flick round and create another petal. So let's take a little look at that. Now, the fun thing about this is, 
It is so quick to do, and it's a huge amount of fun. So I'm going to paint another flower next to it so that we've got two of them. And throughout the week, so I'm going to go somewhere clean because I've, my colours are starting to get a little bit, my brush is a bit fluffy on the end, my colours are starting to get a bit blended. So I want to clean them out and I want to make sure that I load some white in there and get that white back. So you can see now how I've got my white is coming back into my brush. I'm happy again. And let's do another one here. So again, I'm just wiggling my brush and then I'm going to do the same. And this time I'm coming over here. I'm just going to go over that one again. A little bit more white. And remember, this has been so nice learning this because uh, all the, the flowers in the garden, it really sort of, it helps you understand a little bit more about which direction they all go in, which direction the buds go in and all of those kind of things. So this one, I'm gonna put the bud in and I'm gonna put it in a little bit higher up, but also at a slightly different angle. And then I'm gonna come round again. I'm gonna come round again and I'm just gonna fill in that gap there. And what you'll notice is, look at the quality of the paint, how the colour actually goes from white all the way through to that, that ruby colour, and it actually covers the black. That's really important. So let's do just one more of those, and we'll be, um, we'll be talking about mediums and all the other things, because the mediums also, I've got to get rid of that little stray hair. Can you see how it keeps catching? Where are you? <laughs> it's gonna hide from me, I can tell. And I'm just literally, I turned my brush over because it gave me the chance to use a bit more of the paint, maximize the paint that I've got on here. But also I really like this effect because what this does is it looks like the flowers where some of the petals have got more color than others. Some of them are more closed up. Some of them are, le are leaning over. And you've got all of these different looks and you can if you don't like it you can go over it you can see how I'm actually just going over the design it's really forgiving and then again you come round and you take that little sweeping stroke and we create those extra designs so let's do a few more of those little buds and start to build a bit of a composition so I've got here some so I'm gonna put a little bud in here. So I'm gonna do little buds. These are just little tiny buds, so little ones. And we need, oh, we've got two of them there. So I'm gonna put another one down here. And then I'm going to put, um, let's put one here. And you can see now I'm going over a second time. And I quite like this faded away look where you actually, you, you can have really strong buds like the one I've got here, or I can have one where I've, I've let the colour just fade and it looks more interesting. Now, I didn't bring any water in here, so please excuse. I'm going to leave that brush on the side for a moment. And look how much of the paint I've got left. That's why I don't want you to do use more than just um, a two peas worth because that's more than plenty. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get the green and the white and we're going to start putting some detail into these little leaves. And so first of all, you have round a rosebud, it's hugged by like a little calyx. So I'm just going to hug the buds. So I'm just going to create these little huggy bits that are, are hugging up the calyx and they might have a little just a little flower in there, that a little leaf in there that's just catching it. And again, I'm just gonna hug the calyx and put that little flower in. And I'm bringing in a little bit more of the ink or the paint, but only when I'm happy that I'm really sort of losing my color and the depth of color. I don't mind this little bit of faded um, paint. I actually quite like it, I think it, it adds something to the design. So I now need, again, a little bit more of my green. And I'm gonna join these all up because at the moment they're all just floating. So let's make some, we're gonna make some little buddy bits that are gonna join the bits up. So I'm gonna put those behind and I'll have a little buddy bit there. So he needs a stem. 
this one needs a stem and this one needs a stem and let's put some more stems in so let's do some stems that are going to come literally down the sides so we'll put these in and we're just going to give ourselves somewhere to be able to put the little leaves that we need now these little leaves are a gem to do and they're absolutely delightful as fillers so I'm going to I'm going to put the brush down I'm going to turn and pivot push turn pivot push turn see so creating little tiny leaves and then we're just going to flick into them so that they're not floating and they're joined onto the stems let's put a few more over here now you can imagine if I'm using a medium these are going to be great because some of them will look like shadows and we'll get into that as well I'll do lots of that kind of thing so let me do one of those leaves up here for you so you can see it so you're on the pivot of your brush on the on the chisel edge you press your bristles down you turn the brush and twist it in your fingers and lift it up on the chisel edge let's do it again press down turn and lift up so what I'm doing is I've got my brush, press, turn it slightly, lift up and take the pressure. And that is such a simple thing to do. Now that's gonna be a great little leaf, a great little stroke for us to join up for lots of other different things. So I've got gone back to my larger brush. This time I'm putting more of the green and the light on. And it's important you keep your paint fresh. If you feel like it's starting to get sticky and it doesn't want to glide then you, it needs changing remember that wiggle we learnt at the beginning so here we go here's that wiggle remember the wiggle now let's keep the pressure on but turn and slide do the same thing I've just turned the brush over do the wiggle and turn and slide and then we've created our little leaf Let's do the same thing over here. So we'll put one on over here. So I'm going to do a wiggle, 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 turn and slide. This time, I'm just going to do that little flat leaf, turn and slide. So again, creating different little looks and different finishes. Let's do another one down here. So lots of wiggles and then turn and slide, turn it over, wiggle, turn and slide. So actually, if I do some of those strokes that we've got here, you'll see that we've created a little scallop that we did. So there's our scallop. We created a little flat leaf. We then did a scallop and we joined it to the flat leaf and we did a bridge, two parallel lines with a bridge and then a U underneath joining them up and then the little extensions around the side of the buds are literally there we start we press down and we lift up the pressure and we just flick around to get some shape and you can flick and keep them however long or I can push down and I can flick that way so we're going to be learning all of these different designs these different shapes these different patterns so that you can start to build design. I need to teach you some composition, but before I teach you, I need to remember myself because that's not the best composition in the world. However, what it does do, gives you an idea of some of the kinds of things that we can be doing. So I would really like to hope that you're going to come on this journey with me. Now, I'm actually right-handed and I can paint right or left-handed. So I know that all I need you to do is be open-minded because I didn't think I could paint with my left hand, but I learned. So if I can learn to do this, it is literally process. That alphabet and joining up the letters and joining them up to create the handwriting. And together we can do this. We can make these beautiful designs and then think about what we can paint on. We can be painting on furniture, we can be painting on walls, we can paint on fabric, we can paint greeting cards. So this is just a little start of the story that I'd like to take you on. 
and I will um, make sure that we get a list of the small number of materials that we need so that we can all do this together and week by week we'll learn together. So that's my um, decorative painting for you but before I go I just wanted to give you a sneaky peek of a couple of things. It's a bit naughty but I'm actually quite excited. I'm actually more excited about tomorrow than I have been. In fact, tomorrow and Monday are my two favourite days of the next week because we're bringing you a new collection. This is our brand new collection that we're bringing and it's another picture decoupage collection. But look at the designs, look at the colours and look at the styles. And I'm just a little bit excited about what you're going to be able to create with this. Now, the thing that's even more exciting is I get to guest. And I promise you I will get better. Um, the more I do, the more I get better. It's just strange when you're actually not doing what you do at home, but you're doing it on TV. Because at home, I use that thought process to take me through the story. And it's when I get to the sort of my head's thinking of multiple things that I then suddenly realise and remember where I am and I need to be talking to you sensibly. These are some beautiful cards. A lovely Vicky's done these. I think they may all be hers actually. But um, it's a little taster of what we've got to come tomorrow. So I hope you're going to join me with that. That's not on until tomorrow night. But the other thing that I've got is, you know that beautiful kit that we had that everybody absolutely loved because it had all the lace panels and it had everything that you needed to make fabulous cards. And guess what? We've got a new one. And, oh gosh, these flowers are even nicer than the first. The colours are gorgeous. And I think you can see here where... It links back to our decorative painting. Those flowers have been, are, have been a big influence and what I've been learning in the garden has been a huge influence on how I'm actually planning my card making. And so this collection is here as part of that new story and that new journey that I'm going on with you. And this is launching tomorrow morning and I think it's on a... 10 30 something like that so i really hope you'll join me and i'll be back next week and we'll be doing more of our painting and each week i'll recap so that you can actually look at it if you want me to actually help you with your work i'm going to ask you that you message me on facebook and send me pictures of your work and i'll be able to just by looking at it i hope i can tell you whether you need more pressure, less pressure, change your brush, whatever it is. But I'll do everything I can to take you on this journey with me. Because I know how much it has given me over the last few years in terms of just pure joy. And how even when the going gets tough and the days are hard and you read things that you wish you hadn't read and things happen in life. When you get into crafting, it makes such a difference. And I don't want anybody to miss that opportunity. So a massive, massive thank you. We're going to do this together, but I've got some giveaways. I've got some really good stuff to do. So not just one, but three. And I can't believe, do you know, for, I think it took me two years to get the number of people that were joining me on Facebook from like 17,000 to 18,000. I can't believe that there's that many people out there that actually want to do all the things that we do, but there are. So we've got a signature USB that is from this week. That's one of our giveaways. And um, so if you'd like this one, we'll put a picture in the, on and you just put your name below. Then I've got my whole paper kit which has got everything in it from, in fact, I'm gonna show you what's in this one because it's massive. And I love being able to do this for you. Somebody is going to get these, it, it's just brilliant. So you're going to get the honey locust, the shadow bud, the rowan leaves, you'll get eucalyptus, you'll get the shadow rose, you'll get the daydreaming frame, you'll get all of the stencils and you're gonna get this massive stamp set 
and a huge paper kit. So that is for another lucky follower. And thank you, thank you, thank you. We haven't finished because somebody else is going to get um, this fabulous pack of cardstock. And this was the limited edition one. This has actually now come out of our stash because I don't think we've got any of them left. But we did save one. So we saved one so that somebody there can actually have these. So we've got three different giveaways for you. Do you know what? Put your name on all three of them because somebody has to win. And it could be you.